everyone. My scent of the day today and as such my review of the day is 4160 Tuesdays, 4160 Tuesdays and it's called New York 55, New York 1955. This is from their vintage collection. So it has a vintage feel. I believe it's made from materials available at the time of 1955. And this one has notes of, off the top of my head, I don't know all the notes now. I've not looked it up yet, but from memory, I used to have a very small bottle of this and I didn't reach for it very much. I swapped it out. This was years ago and then I swapped it back in. So I did a swap with a lovely fragrance friend, Monique, and I now have New York 55 back in my collection. And it has rose, violet, and I believe it's candy floss. The other notes I've forgotten. The color of the juice does not represent the way this smells. The color of the juice would be if it smelt how it looked. If it looked how it smelt, if it looked how it smelled, it would be a pale pink or maybe even a lilac-y colour. The colour of candy floss, perhaps, because you do smell a sugary candy floss and a, a rose and violet combination that's quite sweet, sweetened. Imagine candied rose petals and candied violet petals. Now, on my hands, I sprayed it about half an hour or so ago. And what I will say is when I first spray this, I get a big dark blast of, I think it must be patchouli. When I first sprayed it earlier today, before my shower, I felt that it smelled oudy. Sometimes I mix up my oud and my patchoulis. Either way, I'm not a fan of ouds and patchoulis, but, uh, and when you first spray this, that's what I get, a bit of a, a heavy patchouli, I think it is, but, half an hour it's completely no longer there it's probably there it's probably doing a job in the background but it's not assaulting my nose in a way that i don't like it's very pretty it's a little bit fizzy so it feels like it's a sprinkling of sherbet on top of those candied petals and a hint of vanilla in the background and then the candy floss as well. There's a little bit of freshness in here and I wouldn't be surprised if there's just some citruses in the mix, not noticeable, but giving it a, a zest and a zing. Just playing a background role to make it a more uh, fresher, not so heavy and overly sweet. And I'm pretty sure there's raspberry or raspberry leaf in here as well. There's definitely a fruitiness. And I'm pretty sure it's a raspberry. So there's a kind of like a, a berry, a berry-ish fruitiness without it being too fruity, floral, berry, floral thing. That's all I'm giving you right now because I have to go to work. I'm actually running a little bit late, so I must go. Bye. Hello then, so a little update on the fragrance, New York 55. I just done a quick respray on my left hand just to remind myself of the opening and I still feel like there's patchouli in that opening which is really weird because it does go quite quickly and I looked up the notes and there is no mention of patchouli. Normally patchouli would be a base note rather than a top note. So there's something just a bit dark and strange in the very first few minutes of the fragrance, but it does go really, really quickly. And then you do get the fizzy, fizzy candy floss, rose and violet combination with a little bit of sweetness and the raspberry, so it is raspberry, I checked the notes. Notes are raspberry, rose, violet, vanilla, and musk and candy floss. They are the notes, that's all that's listed. On my skin now, it hasn't massively changed, it's just become a bit lighter and a bit powdery. So probably that musk is now coming through. We are at about 11 p.m. now, so I sprayed it at around half six. So half six in the evening I sprayed it, it's now 11 p.m. And I feel like there's still a little bit of freshness in here and it might be coming from the raspberry. It's a little bit fresh 
and fruity and sweet. It's a very playful kind of scent, flirty, feels quite young, but it's different to a typical fruity floral that you might buy in Debenhams or John Lewis. The musk is really lovely with the vanilla now. It's making a really nice dry down, very crowd pleasing and easy to wear. I think that's really all I have to say at the moment and I will come back to you in a bit. So it's nearly 3 a.m. and this is gonna be my final update. So this is almost nine hours into the wear of the fragrance. And let's just talk about performance. I can still smell it around me gently as I move. So it's not dyed yet. It's not become a complete skin scent. So performance is absolutely fine, good, average, if not better than average. It's not a loud, uh, big projector by any means. At any point, it's a, quite a safe fragrance you could wear to work or in any or anywhere really without worrying about choking anyone out. It's not. A, it's it projects kind of uh, half an arm's length at max really. I'm still smelling it even just now. I just without having to move, I caught a whiff of it just then and. Let's talk about the scent, which is much more important. So now in this far dry down, I'm noticing it's more powdery and there's something ever so slightly savoury that's stopping it being too sweet. It's reminding me a little bit of the sexiest scent on the planet. So it wouldn't surprise me if there are similar accords or ingredients in there that are in the sexiest scent on the planet, if you know that. If you don't know the sexy scent on the planet, it's a, a very creamy, lightly woodsy, vanillic fragrance with a hint of a lemony bergamot in the opening. It's really beautiful. And this is reminding me of that now in the dry down. I believe I'm getting a lot more of the vanilla, although it's never feeling like it's a straight up vanilla. There's still, still hints of the beautiful rose and violet accord although they are much less noticeable now it's almost like smelling melted vanilla ice cream that's flavored with rose and violet ro uh, water it's like rose water violet water but with this slightly it's non-sweet entity that's very very light barely there that's just stopping it being too sweet that might be a bit of Isoe Super. I noticed on one review that ambergris was listed as a note and there is something like sort of woodsy or uh, salty, almost like a resin, but it's very, very understated. You don't really know it's there, but if you're, in, if you're studying it like I am, then you might then you might think, oh yeah, there's something there. There's something there that's stopping this from being too sweet. But for the most part, it's like a melted ice cream, almost melted ice cream with that beautiful makeup vibe, like you know, a beautiful lipstick and powder smell, like the Guerlain uh, powders, meteorites, kind of like that, but with a bit more. It's a little more gourmand. The vanilla's more noticeable. The vanilla's the main player now, I think. Vanilla, then powder, and then the rose and violet now, much underplayed, a hint of something savory. And as I said, it's kind of like a melted ice cream, the vanilla. It's really beautiful. It's a lovely fragrance, an absolute pleasure to wear and I have thoroughly enjoyed wearing it today. It's kind of cheered me up on a freezing cold winter's night. I went out for a little walk earlier, absolutely freezing out there. You know, when your, your air is all, um, is all white. What's that called? Mist, I don't know. I'm tired. So that's my review of New York 55 from 4,160 Tuesdays. 
Just before I go, check out the latest video from Clements CC. I'm gonna link it below. It's really great. It's a gift guide for buying females perfume, a safe guide. So it's a safe fragrances you can purchase for females. Actually, it's way more useful than that. It breaks down lots of really popular, fantastic fragrances. Clement CC is an expert. She has worked in perfumery for a long time and uh, is beautiful to listen to and watch. So check out her video, which I'll link below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.